Hello everyone, and thanks for watching. This isn't exactly the recap, recap, recap that we do, but um, I have some guests here. We actually had to move into a new room to do this here at the church. And uh, I'm going to let these guys introduce themselves and just talk about how God is using them and moving in and through them uh, in different places in the world. So I'm going to let that, I'm not stealing their thunder. <laughs> let you guys just do, uh, just talk about um, kind of tell us where, who you are and um, what you've been doing. So here we go. Hit it. I'm Joseph Fleming, and I'm also a member here at Calvary, but uh, I was, uh, my family and I went to India in 2013 as missionaries with the International Mission Board. And after three years there, we transitioned to West Africa, uh, Senegal, southern part of Senegal, in a place called Ziganshor. And there we implemented the same strategy that we used in India, which is a reproducible discipleship training called Tree of Life that helped trains national disciples to make national disciples. And we're still engaged in that, but we're not in West Africa currently living. Okay. Yeah, we're going to hear the term tree of life several times as we talk. Yes. So I'm, that, and I really want to, I want you to spell Ziganshor. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, man, I've worked hard at that, and I still can't do it. Yeah, I know yeah. it's, it's easy to misspell, yes. And I just go, that's, that's all I need. We'll just refer to it as Zig like everyone else Zig. does. Yes, Zig. Yes. Zig. Yeah, all right. So I'm Justin Hoy. I'm, uh, I'm also a member here at Calvary and have been since 2009. And um, Rachel and I uh, came here in 2009 and became members at Calvary. And then um, through the process of walking with the Lord here, that God, that God called us to uh, be missionaries, which was a long of our heart for uh, quite some time. And um, so I knew Joe was in Senegal, where we had been many times before previously on short-term trips, uh, because Joe and I used to go to the same church together um, before we came here. And, um, and so God called us back to um, Senegal, where we had been, and uh, we, we left here in January of 2019, 2019, and we're still um, in Senegal currently. We live in Zig and Shore uh, also, Zig. and Zig, we live in Zig also, and um, so the, we're a partner, we've partnered with um, Tree of Life, and we're helping to push out national believers into the field. Um, uh, to, uh, to, to, to draw in the harvest that God has. Okay. All right, far away. Most people know you. <laughs> I'm Dave Anthony, and uh, I've been here as long as Pastor Stewart. We started attending Calvary the week after Pastor Stewart came to Calvary Baptist Church. And once Joe Fleming came home, somehow God put us together. <laughs> so I'm trying to support the work that these men are doing and, and uh, the other indigenous missionaries in Africa and Pakistan and wherever else God leads and opens up to us in the future. Uh, I'm on the board uh, 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 for Training to Send, and I serve as the secretary and treasurer for the organization. So uh, the, the, the heroes of these men here who sacrificed and spent so many years overseas, and uh, the work that is happening over there is so phenomenal that we want everybody to know about it, and if those who are able to support it in any way, with their prayers or their contributions or whatever that God would lay on your heart, uh, we need to be working where God's working, and mm -hmm. he is working in West Africa and in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. That's really cool, thanks Dave. Joe. Uh, Dave just mentioned something. He said, uh, training to send, and you mentioned tree of life. Help us understand. I mean, it, yes, sir. It put, give us an explanation. What, sure. what, what's the diff between well, the I, two? I can take you all the way back to where it started. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so um, my wife, Melissa, who's also a, a member here and really uh, foundational, is truly my better half. <laughs> and my daughter, Jenna, uh, who, who also attends here, and she's a senior this year at Grace, we were uh, through the International Mission Board was sent to South Asia, to India, to Bangalore, India, southern part of India in January of 2013. And there we learned a tool called Tree of Life. <clears throat> and uh, the very foundation of it was that every disciple is a missionary and every disciple is, a, um, uh, is responsible to carry the gospel to their sphere of influence and be able to be trained to train others. So every disciple is a missionary and every disciple has a mission field. It's a biblical foundation we see in the Great Commission. So that's, that's not just a thing that's uh, on foreign lands compared to the U.S. That's, that's every believer. That's every believer. That's every disciple. Christ gives that command to all disciples, not just a certain type of disciple or just to the pastors. It's to, to all disciples. And so the training is designed to take a disciple and train them not only how to go with the gospel, but to be able to train other disciples how to go with the gospel. So there's, a, there's this multiplication that begins to happen through training disciples within the indigenous church 
that carries the gospel. The gospel begins to multiply. Trained workers are beginning to multiply. The workers in the harvest are increasing. And therefore, as, God, as faithful disciples are obedient to the commands of Christ to go make disciples, the Lord begins to multiply his kingdom. And so you have more disciples to train. And from that is just organically churches begin to be planted. And God's kingdom is, is growing and multiplying. And God is glorified in that as he uses his church. So would it be uh, a good assumption that training to sin is kind of a, kind of a core level right down at the beginning uh, this is what it means. Follow Christ, mm -hmm. and you go from there. Yeah. Well, tree of okay. life would be the training tree of life. Did I have the wrong word? You did. Yeah. <laughs> you did. Yeah. Yeah. But that's I okay. tried we're, so hard. We're yeah. getting there. We're okay. getting there. All right. So, <clears throat> as yeah. Justin was saying, so when we were um, after three years there, there was some IMB missionaries in Senegal in Ziggenshore that uh, had had indigenous leaders. Uh, our main partner now, Ufi Boli, and his wife Olga. Who they know, and who they knew, and, and they had said, "Hey, we've heard of them. Yeah, we, say their name again." Ufa, Ufi, and Olga Boli. Okay, Ufi and Olga. They have four sons and just phenomenal, just phenomenal disciples and workers for Christ. And mm -hmm. so they said, "Hey, can you bring that training here?" The missionaries asked us, and we, you know, we prayed through that, and then we felt that that's what God wanted. The IMB approved it, and so we did. We we ended up in Ziggenshore in April 2016, and we began to work with Ufi um, and introduced this training to him. And he grasped it. He understood that he, his, and I think this would be, I think Justin would agree with this, is that uniformly the nationals there have always been, we really don't need you to come and live here forever. We just need your help train us and we can do the work. In fact, That's a really good perspective. It is. Yeah. And they can do it better than we can. Right. And so Tree of Life is the mechanism. All right, that's the tool, right? I mean, it's, it's that, that's the t training strategy that's just saturated with Scripture that trains disciples how to make disciples. But after three years there, and it's multiplying, so we had to, through Ufi and Olga and through training, many disciples, networks of master trainers were, re were developed in Guinea-Bissau and Senegal. And I'm fast-forwarding here to 2019, where the indigenous workers were able to do all the training. God was using them. My role wasn't really needed anymore. I'm more of a starter and a pusher, mm -hmm. but there needed to be someone that could come that could really even make the work better, that could help on the, uh, the IT side of that because there's a lot of things like audio Bibles and projectors that show the Jesus film, things that are legit. Kind of uh, further discipleship stuff. Yes. Yeah, you got the first part, and now the next exactly. part. Exactly. And so Justin Hoy and his family, who we, we go way back, and our friendship goes way back. We love his family, and they were like, hey, we'll go. We want to go. They'd come short term over there with us, and so and so like, we come. And so they came and lived in the same house we did. And for six months we were together, and transition was completed, and we came back in 2019 in July. Mm -hmm. But from from there was a period there where I had an opportunity through Voice of the Martyrs to travel through West Africa, and we saw the same condition of the West African church as we saw in Senegal. There was no growth, there was no mm -hmm. discipleship, and the church was stagnating. And Islam is coming from the north, and it's mm -hmm. gobbling it up. And the leaders there said, do you have a tool that helps us, our people make disciples, mm -hmm. disciple, our disciples make disciples. And said, yeah, we have Tree of Life. We can do that. As a matter of fact, I do. <laughs> yes. And we have great indigenous workers that we can send to you. Mm -hmm. But then the question came up for my wife and I is, well, how do we do that? How do we, it's going to take some resources to connect, to get these missionaries that we, I mean, these national missionaries that we know in Senegal and in Guinea-Bissau and get them to where it needs to go, especially French-speaking countries. They share the same language and the their their context is the same. It's Africans, training Africans is always better. Mm -hmm. And so God put it in our heart to start training to send. It's a 501c3 that its, that its whole purpose is to send national workers all over West Africa, taking Tree of Life, the training strategy, mm -hmm. to the indigenous church to help them make disciples and church plant. And, and we see God multiplying using this strategy. But so it's a con uh, the connection to Western resources to the Eastern Church and Eastern missionaries. So Training to Sin is able to take Western mm -hmm. resources here, funnel them into Eastern missionaries, the trainers that we know and that we mm -hmm. work with intimately, that Justin knows intimately, and we trust, that are kingdom-minded, who just want to see God's glory and their people reach for Christ, and we're able to send them throughout West Africa. And so that's the difference between the two. Training to Sin is like the sending agency and, mm -hmm. and the tool to, in order to take in resources to send them, and Tree of Life is the training strategy. That so we Send and Life. There's the send is the send, yes. and life is the training. Yeah, that's right. right. Okay, that's, I'm going to stick with that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry to be so long-winded, but that, that, no, help, no, that I, will help I you get a, a better understanding. Oh, yeah. Okay, I hope that yeah. helps. Well, well, at church, we'll hear different um, terms thrown around, and yes. we're like, what, who, where? It yeah. doesn't help that your name starts with a J, and so well, it is. Yeah. Like, uh, and, 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 and we are. Yeah. We always say this, is that we're linked together. We're, we're linked to, you know, Justin, training to sin was never started without Justin being involved in that. Yeah. 
In fact, I would have loved Justin to be on the board, but he couldn't because he's with FIM. Okay. And that, that creates a little, you know, that he just couldn't do it. It's so, another acronym that we're not going to get into. Yeah, no. yeah. So, <laughs> right. And so there, he's, we're linked together. And so the work is, is linked. And Calvary's a big part of that now. Cool. We're thankful for that. Cool. Dave, do you got anything to add to that, what he was talking about? Well, the training to send, the, the, the vision for training to send is that uh, as we have opportunity, we go to every nation in Africa. So we're in nine nations now. We're getting ready to start uh, next month and, and the 10th. And as the invitations become available, we want to go, be able to go and say, yes, we'll come and we'll bring train, a tree of life to you. And so that the church can continue to expand. God is pouring out his spirit there. Mm -hmm. He is moving the hearts of people. And many are coming out of darkness into his light. Mm -hmm. And we're not seeing that happen here in America, by and large. We want it to happen so bad. Mm -hmm. We're also offering the training here in the States. Uh, we're having difficulty for it to gain the traction mm -hmm. that it is overseas. But we're going to continue to be faithful to offer it here to whoever wants it. So that uh, when God moves... We're ready. Amen. So that's the key, key there. And the other key is we know that the American church has resources available to help our brothers and sisters who are so in need in these dark places. And this is a 1040 window that we're operating in. So that should resonate with people. And it's also unreached people groups mm -hmm. that we're reaching with the with tree of life. So those two things should stimulate the church to say, yes. Let's get involved. I want to be a part of this. So we're, we're inviting the churches, not just Calvary. Mm -hmm. Calvary is uh, very prominent in our plan for the future and our hopes for the future, but we want other churches to join it's in too. It's bigger than Calvary. It's, yeah. it's to yeah. totally yeah, bigger than that, yeah. and it's not denominational, non-denominational in aspect, mm -hmm. even though Tree of Life was written by a Southern Baptist mm -hmm. pastor Master. or cool. missionary. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, Justin, talk yeah. about, um, see, your, your home on... Um, See, I even hesitate to say home. Home assignment. But yeah, you're, you're I'm stateside. I'm not home. I'm Let's stateside. Let's just say stateside. Yeah, yeah. keep it that way. Yeah. So um, uh, Pastor Stewart and uh, Pete Comby were over uh, hanging out with you very, yeah. very recently. Only, they were? what, two months ago? A uh, month ago. Uh, yeah, two months, I guess, now. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, they were there in August. And um, it's great to see um, pastors, brothers and sisters uh, in the church here come and see because— um, some people are skeptical of what's happening there yeah. just because we don't see that here. And so uh, we don't have a, uh, a standard to measure what's happening um, mm -hmm. thereby. I'll come and back so, to that because i got a good question. Okay. Keep going. Um, so um, they were eager to come, and we were happy to have them, and, and we ran them ragged. Um, they, were, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were all over the place, and, um, but it was good to get, uh, for them to get to see um, what's happening. We don't necessarily need people to come and train. We need people from the States to come and see. Mm. Um, and that spurs, that spurs on uh, enthusiasm uh, in the church here to get behind that and continue to push it. Right. Uh, as Dave said, the, the American church um, does have the resources and training to sin is the mechanism to get those resources in the hands of brothers and sisters in Christ uh, in West Africa, who can take those resources and to, to, put the, uh, to put the training into practice to go and train other um, indigenous peoples, what it means to be a, a follower of Christ, what that looks like on a daily basis. How do I then put my faith into practice by sharing the gospel, by tra training other believers to do the same? Uh, and our vision is for, uh, to make disciples who make disciples who make disciples. Mm -hmm. um, we, the church there is filled with church members, but the church there lacks disciples. And there's a huge difference between a church member and a disciple mm -hmm. because a disciple always reproduces, always. Uh, and so that's the goal. That's the vision. That's what we want to see um, God do in West Africa. Yeah, let me, let me back it up to uh, something you yeah. said about um, uh, when they went over and they, um, you, you said, I think it was something like uh, not something specifically to do, but to see. Right. And it sparked a, a conversation I had with someone and actually a couple conversations regarding uh, what are they doing over there, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Right. And um, help us understand. Yeah. Um, it, it's because a lot of folks think of mission work and they th in the American church, they think it's construction. Right. They think it's humanitarian work. And we, we kind of don't like to say, <clears throat> we don't like to say humanitarian because then we're right. like, well, we're not godly enough. That's so sure. uh, <laughs> it's construction. Yeah. So, you know, help us understand that that's not it. Right. No. So, um, what we, uh, the focus that we have, and kind of our role, I can kind of hit it from this angle, is um, we believe that the national is the best missionary. 
Um, the, the reason we believe that is because they already know the language. Mm -hmm. um, just where we work, there are 30 different languages. There's no way I can know all of those. I can't know one of those, much less all of those. Um, they already know the culture, and so they know how to speak the gospel into the culture where it's effective, where I, don't, I could live there my entire life, but I could not fully understand all of the nuances of the culture. Um, and they also have connections with other believers in the country so that they can then go and take the training too. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, na the missionary is the best, the national is the best missionary. Mm -hmm. And so if we can train them and resource them, they can do it 10 times better than mm -hmm. I can because of those things I just outlined. Mm -hmm. um, and so for us, it's, a, it's about coming alongside of our brothers and sisters mm -hmm. in Christ, supporting them, praying for them, mm -hmm. guiding them, yes, but helping them be out front. We want the national to be out front mm -hmm. because whether we like it or not, when I get out of my truck in the middle of Senegal, I, I'm, there, there's a barrier. You're not from around I'm here. I'm not from here. Mm -hmm. I'm not their people. Right. Um, and whether it's wrong, right, or indifferent, it it's, doesn't matter. It's just it's different. Just, it just is what it is. But for them, there's no barrier. There's zero barrier. Mm -hmm. They speak the language. They understand the culture, and they know how to to share um, the gospel in that context. Yeah. Um, and so for me, it's about coming alongside them and helping resource them to do the work better than I ever could. And so for us, it's we're stand, we stand in the background, they're out front, but we're helping them with Bibles, audio Bibles, S, um, uh, projectors, et cetera, to help mm -hmm. them do uh, the job better. To teach, to, to train, train, to encourage right. and their so, fellow believers and new believers, and correct. which are fellow believers. But yeah. Yeah. So um, for us, missions is not construction projects, it's not humanitarian aid. For us, it's about the kingdom of God, building the kingdom of God, growing the kingdom of God, and how, do, how can we best do that in an indigenous context? And that's helping the national believer become a disciple. Who will, be, who will make disciples, who will make disciples. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Joe, you want to add anything to that? With uh... Well, no, I, I just think it might be helpful if, if you reverse that and said, okay, we're going to send an African pastor to America. He doesn't know English. He doesn't know our culture. So it takes him three years to learn English, and he doesn't know it's our culture. It's going to take a lifetime to learn the culture. Yeah, <laughs> and so who's the best missionary? Though? Am I the best missionary to the Americans, or is he? Well, I am because it's my people and it's my it's, so it, so. Mm -hmm. Why would it be any different on the other end of that? Right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. so that's what Tree of, Tree of Life focuses on that. And it takes the indigenous trains the indigenous worker and watches how God uses him in his culture mm -hmm. for his glory to multiply mm -hmm. disciples who make disciples. And I we lost that along the way mm -hmm. in, in in missions. We mm -hmm. lost that. And, and so it, and I, that's something just you know. Since the training ever began in India and in how it spread to West Africa, where Justin and I came together and began. To, the indigenous worker is the best missionary. Mm -hmm. The national missionary is the best missionary. But we have a role. In and it, you, you see that in the book of Acts. What did Paul do when he went to a village? Right. right? He mm -hmm. shared the gospel. Yes. When people came to faith, he began to train them. Right? And then he began to send them out, just yes. like Jesus yeah. did with his disciples. Exactly. It's yeah. the same strategy. Yes. It's, not, it's not a new strategy. It's a biblical strategy. That's it's right. A, it's a biblical yeah. strategy. And that tree of life is really a biblical, the foundation of it is biblically. All through the, especially if you look through the book of Acts, yeah. you can see this reproducible discipleship training, Paul is using that. Right. Acts 19, 8 through mm -hmm. 10 is a perfect example of that. And so we, um, we're committed to that. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what I think Justin and I could say we're, we're willing to commit the rest of our lives yes. to this. Yes. Yeah. Because we see God using it in such a powerful way. We, what we ask is, is the Western church just, God can still use the American church because God has given us resources. Yes, God's not working the same way, like my brother said. He's not working the same way here as he's, that we're seeing happen now. Yeah. Justin's mm -hmm. in it every day, I was, and, mm -hmm. and still am as we're traveling back and forth, and, 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 and we're so, we're so um, embedded with the national church now. So yeah. we, you know, when they hurt, we hurt, and, so it works, and we know what's happening there, what God's doing. Mm -hmm. um, but what we would ask is just not only Calvary, but believers from all over yeah. uh, the states, is, is you can still have a big impact on the Great Commission. You can, and, and it's with your resources. You don't have to go. You, you, don't, have to, you don't have to be there. They, in fact, they, they really would say you don't have to, but just right. join us. They're willing to go to places and risk their life for Christ. Mm -hmm. Some of them in places like Niger, if they get caught doing what they're doing, ISIS will kill them. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't bother them because they're disciples of Christ. We're mm -hmm. going. Basically. But the only thing they're asking, could you please come alongside us and help me get there? Because yeah. mm -hmm. I can't afford to go over here to share the gospel and train these disciples mm -hmm. unless you give me a little bit of money to yeah. help me. And, yeah. that's, and the Western church can do that. Yeah. And yeah. so that's the beautiful part and body of Christ coming together. Mm -hmm. The Western church with Eastern missionary, and God can use that for his yeah. glory.
Praise the Lord. Yeah, um, I'm going to start to wind us down, and uh, I'm going to start with you, Dave, and we'll share something. You've shared a smidge, but maybe we need a reminder of what can someone that's watching this that maybe is part of Calvary, what can they do? Um, so you, you'd be a good voice for that. And Justin, I'm going to go further, okay. not just Calvary, but maybe someone that doesn't know Calvary happens to see this video. Yeah. And then you just pick up where they leave off. <laughs> yes, right. sir. So, Dave. Well, the first challenge would be uh, to take the training and to become a disciple and to disciple others and to be a witness. We need, as a, in the American church, uh, we need to get back on board with the Great Commission. Mm -hmm. we're, we're in sin uh, by not being faithful with the Great Commission. And there are people here who are dying every day and going to hell because they haven't heard the gospel. And we have that message. Mm -hmm. And so we need God to move in our hearts to move us to share it with other people mm -hmm. and then to train them uh, beyond that. So if you bring someone into Christ, you have now a tool also to uh, make a disciple of them. Mm -hmm. And they will immediately go out and make a, a disciple of others because they're, when you first come to Christ, you're very enthusiastic. It's us guys who have been in the church for 10, 20, 30, 40 years that are now become a problem. And we're not representing Christ as we should. So we have to, we have to repent of that and get engaged. And then if we're engaged with Christ, then we're going to want any place that the gospel is going forward, we're going to want that to be uh, to go as fast as it can go and as, as many places as it can go, and that means fund it. We have the resources. We have extra money. If you've got $5 a month uh, or uh, $500 a month or whatever it might be, those resources are invaluable in the hands of new Christians overseas. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have the capacity to help change the world, and we don't, I don't know how much time we have left. So we have to have a sense of urgency. Mm -hmm. While God is moving, we need to be on board with what God is doing. We don't know how long it'll last. We don't know how long the opportunity will be. We don't know how long we're going to be in a position to be able to help, even as Americans, because the, the way that the world is going right now, uh, we have a limited opportunity. So we're just, we're enthusiastic because we see what God is doing, and if they wasn't doing anything, we would not be enthusiastic. About it. And here's the other thing about it. You can't have zeal for anything you're not doing. You never have zeal for something you're not doing. So if you're not... If you don't have a zeal to share the gospel, then begin to share the gospel. If you don't have a zeal to pray, then begin to pray. If you don't have a zeal to, to serve your resources, begin with whatever you can to share those resources. God will then give you a passion and a zeal for that. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we wait for the zeal to come before we respond. It doesn't work that way. Right. We have to be obedient, and then we get a zeal and a passion. Yeah, so... What I'm about to say might seem a little harsh, but um, when it comes to missions, um, there are three responses. Um, we can go, we can send, or we can disobey. Um, and so I just encourage you to either go or to send. And to send, um, sending, uh, praying doesn't require a passport, it doesn't require a visa, it doesn't require a plane ticket. Um, so you can help us you can help, not us, you can help the national indigenous believer uh, in West Africa go by, by, by providing him her, or her with the resources necessary to be able to go. So I just encourage you, I encourage Calvary, I encourage churches in the area, churches all across the U.S. to get involved, um, to not be disobedient, but to go uh, and or to help send. So. Amen. Joe, close us down here. Send us out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I... <clears throat> I think I'd, um, I would be amiss because, I, and I think I can speak for, for Justin and for Dave, is that our, our heart is really for the indigenous worker. We're very attached to them. We see, um, um, I think it's important to understand that most of the places that we're working, as we're, you know, uh, where Justin is and where I was there, and then as we're working throughout West Africa, that it's, um, it's a Muslim context mostly, or strongly animist. Mm -hmm. uh, persecution is, um, is a daily thing in, in believers' lives. Mm -hmm. um, and so when they come to Christ, they know on the front end that I'm, I'm probably going to lose my family, and I'm, I may, in some places, may actually be killed. I may be beaten. 
And you have to understand the family context there is everything. We have health insurance here. That's their health insurance. Mm -hmm. Their okay. family takes care of each other. Mm -hmm. When you come to Christ, you're cut from that. So you're cut off from your family. You're cut off from your culture. They know that when they come to Christ on the front end. Americans don't understand that. Mm -hmm. We don't get that. And so they know when they come to Christ, it's going to cost them something. So when you take this disciple who's already saying, I'm willing to lose all of that to know my Lord, to serve him. And you train him and you invest in him. Whew, they've already counted the cost. They've already done it. Mm -hmm. And they're willing to give it all. So I think we on this end can say, hey, we'll give that to help them. We'll help them go reach their people. Yeah. Because we're working in places they've never heard the gospel. Mm -hmm. Now think about that. It's 2022. They've never heard the gospel. We're sending trainers now to villages that have never heard the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. You have believers that, since they've been believers, have never had a Bible. Mm -hmm. You have thousands of new believers who have no access to Scripture. We can change that. Mm -hmm. We can change that. God wants to use us that way. So join that. Please join that with us. And that just brings glory to God. The body just brings glory to our Lord and furthers the kingdom. Amen. Well, thanks for... Um watching this video. I hope you've learned a few things about uh, what God is doing and you've been challenged. So uh, God bless you all and um, go to church on Sunday and repent and give and um, just listen to the Lord, see where he's leading you. God bless you. Thank you.